So many of you ask for it. Today is the day we're going to analyze my Trabant's aerodynamics in F1 style. So we will use F1 style Flovis paint and cotton threads. So here we go. So as many of you know also from my previous video, the Trabant has never seen a wind tunnel. So there was no aerodynamic development. But still, let's have a look at what they did here because there are quite some interesting features. The basic shape is pretty boxy and uh, this is what was modern in the 1950s and 1960s. We have a high pressure area in front of the car, we have a pretty steep windscreen, we have a pretty steep rear window and we have a pretty boxy back. So let's start at the front. At the front we can see that underneath the license plate there is this black metal piece here underneath and this is avoiding too much air to flow underneath the car. Basically this is a cover for the exhaust system which sits in front but aerodynamically it also helps to reduce lift at the front because less air can go underneath the car. Um, we have a pretty big air intake but as you can see on a closer look there are three holes. So let's have a closer look here. So there's one hole at this side there's a rounder hole with a net here and there is another covered hole here. So in total we have only two air intakes. This here is the interior air intake and we will have a closer look at this in a second. And this is the engine air intake. We don't really need big air intakes here because the car is air cooled so there is no radiator. And we will have a look at the engine compartment in a second. So that's the Trabant's engine compartment. It's not very pretty at the moment, but it's original. We can see the air intake underneath here and it's blowing air towards the engine cover. So it's not directly going somewhere, but the big fan is sucking air for the air cooling at this position and then it's guiding the air through the cylinders and blows out at the bottom. So it's a very simple cooling system. The other air intake for the interior is here with this little net and then we have this straight pipe. Yes, the Trabant is straight piped and goes into the interior. So it's a very simple and clever system. The cool thing is that you have overpressure. You have quite a lot of overpressure at the front of the Trabant because it's so straight. And there is a lot of pressure at the entrance. And if we have a look around the car, we can see that this is actually the air outlet of the interior. So we have pretty high wind velocities along here and along the C pillar, which we will see later on. And this means here's a lot of lower pressure. So it was quite standard in the 1960s and 70s that cars had the interior outlet here. Nowadays it's hidden underneath the side panel, somewhere around the bumper area. But older cars have it here. So it's a pretty good pressure differential between inlet and outlet. So we saw that the engine doesn't need too much air because it's air cooled, it's quite a small engine, but still the hot air has to go somewhere. So there's a quite a nice exit here, which is in front of the windscreen. The problem with this is that because the windscreen is so upright here, we have quite a high pressure in front of the windscreen. And the pressure difference between inlet of the um, engine compartment and between the outlet here in front of the uh, center of the windscreen especially, uh, there's not a big pressure difference. So my guess is that air will actually go in there instead of out there. So this exit only makes sense when the car is stationary, so in a traffic jam for example, but it will work over here because we have quite high air velocity around the A pillar. And if we look at the A pillar, it's quite unfortunate that there is a drain, which is basically catching the air and works like a parachute in this area, creates massive separations. These separations are on the side window and the side window will shake because of that in certain frequencies and that is noise while driving. So something we develop quite much in detail today but at the time it wasn't really a topic for them. The next thing is, and that's why these cotton threads are here, we will see this later on, there will be a massive separation from this because all the air is going up here is um, hitting this fence basically and then there is a massive separation bubble. It will reattach somewhere in this area. And then we have quite a nice roof flow until the end. And here is a separation line. So the airflow will separate here. The problem with that is that that basically brings the whole back end of the car into a massive wake. So the air will separate somewhere along here. And then we have this massive wake behind the car. And we will see this in a minute with the cotton threads. 
And there were some stories of engine swap Trabants, which were driving more than 120 miles per hour or 200 kilometers per hour, that were losing their rear window because the suction was so high and these windows are not glued in like modern cars. These are just held by this rubber ceiling. So if you're strong enough, you can just suck this back window out. Actually, some quite nice features about the aerodynamics of this car is that the front edges are pretty round, so shouldn't get any problems around here. The mirror is pretty small and we only have one mirror. So on the other side of the car, there is not even a mirror. The cool thing is that the car is quite narrow, so it's only 1.5 meter and we have pretty clear separation lines along the side here, something that modern cars always try to do. The Trabant had this because of its 1950s, 1960s design. And also the quite boxy shape here is okay, but problem is here that we don't have a clear separation line, so like a little spoiler or something could help with drag here. So if you want to make Flovis yourself, simply take petroleum and mix it with chalk particles. Then you can use a spray bottle or a brush to put it on the car. So I use Flovis here at the front, but the problem with Flovis is that it needs to dry while you're driving. And usually for race cars it's fine because you're driving at high speed. But for the Trabi, when I put it on, then it's already starting to dry and when I'm driving it's already partly dry. So the problem here is that you can see how it's running down when I'm not driving and it's just dripping down the hood and it's not really the aerodynamics we can see here. We can see a few effects because a few parts of this here were drying while driving. So what you can see here is how the air is basically going towards the A-pillar and then to the side. We can see that there's a little bit of an overpressure area here which you would assume because here is our drain and there's also this edge here which is boxing in the air a little bit and um, all the rest is basically just how the, how the fluid was dripping down and drying while the car was stationary. On the other hand, the speeds with the Trabant are not that high, so um, it takes quite a long time to drive and although I'm driving top speed the whole time, it's still not dry. Also at these weather conditions, it's not super hot right now, it just takes too long, so the Flovis is not really the ideal method to analyze the aerodynamics under these conditions. What you can see here at the back is that there is some flow along the C-pillar here and then on the tailgate and then this is like going a little bit towards the center. So something we can see right here but all the rest again is dripping basically because this wasn't really dry when I was driving. Um, so it's not really a separation line we can see here, this is just the fluid dripping down. So Flovis is definitely not the right thing to analyze aerodynamics. So let's use some cotton threads instead. But the good thing about Flovis is that you can just easily wipe it off once it's dried. So just have a look at this. That's perfect. So let's start with some cotton threads on the windscreen. We can see that the flow is fully attached, only right behind the viper is a separation. So the next thing is I want to see how this air outlet from the engine compartment works. So we put one line of tape and some cotton threads here and one behind. So we can see if there is airflow above and below. And also here in front we can see how the air is approaching this. So as expected, we can see that the airflow is nicely aligned towards the outlet, but the outlet does not work towards the center in front of the windscreen because the windscreen is creating such a high pressure that is forcing air back into the engine compartment. But it does work nicely on the outside where the air can flow around the windscreen. At the back we see that basically everything behind the rear window is fully separated, so we have no attached flow there. We only have a weakly attached flow at the side of the tailgate, which is pretty much what we saw with the Flovis before. So at the front we can see the separations at the front edge like we said before. And at the back we can see how nicely the flow is aligned and the weight behind the separation line. So I hope you liked this little summary about the Trabant, a car that was actually never designed in the wind tunnel. But still there are quite some 
good and sensible aerodynamic features like for example the air intake right in the stagnation point for the interior and the air outlets here in a low pressure area with the flow around the C-pillar. We see a clear separation line at the roof. We have a pretty nice separation line at the sides, something that modern cars are jealous about. And we also have quite a nice engine outlet here, but it only works on the outside because the windscreen is creating quite some higher pressure here, as we could see with uh, cotton threads. So all in all, it was pretty nice what they did with what they had back in the day. And if you want to know more about the Trabant and the history and all the background, check out my other video. So see you at the next video.